Hello friends, my name is Andrew and this is the Rough Pass animation for a little, little sword fight. We're starting off and with some really, really, really quick and messy uh, thumbnail sword board to kind of just get the layout and the angle that I want to do. Um, so there's a little character getting jerked around and there's a sword. Um, Normally, if I'm just working for myself, doing my own little thing, I don't spend a huge amount of time on these, which you, you'll see in a second. So it's just experimenting to test out the different angles, kind of see what I'm trying to, which one I like best to do what I want. And you see, it took me two tries, and I decided, yeah, going for it. Um, the next stage, then I jumped over in trying to figure out the perspective for the background and. That was the fastest way to get some kind of intelligible grid instead of to draw it freehand. Um, this is just do what I did and draw some straight lines and then warp it all over to give it vanishing points. The reason I'm just going to kind of like babble over top of this instead of uh, just playing some music over it is because I'm not kidding when I say this. Well, this one's pretty rough. I was. It's a lot of scribbling and I'm just tr gonna try and you know hopefully make it a little bit more useful to anybody who's trying to like see how, how this sort of see how I did this or how I got to where I'm going the reason it's just the first part the rough animation is because this took a really stinking long time for me to do this well if you're anything like me it's probably not a surprise to say let me, let me think about how long this should take. Okay, cool. Now, double it. Because I'm freaking terrible at deciding how long, or estimating how long something's gonna take. We'll just call it a weak grasp of the passage of time. Um, so, anyway, the tentacle villain creature thing is in blue. Our fun little character with her sword is in red. and. I wanted to do something a little bit more crea uh, creative and interesting with the way that it's not just, you know, swinging swords around, so I wanted to have something a little bit more out of the ordinary in terms of, like, sword fighting stuff. So she has her arms pinned to her sides uh, when she gets grabbed by the tentacle thing, and her wrist down at the bottom, the one holding the sword in her looks like right hand, is, is free to kind of like turn around, but she's not really going to have much leverage or be able to do a whole lot with that. So I have her using her legs to push against, push against the hilt and, you know, manipulate it in different ways uh, to, to fight back even with her arms pinned to her sides. Um, this, <laughs> there's a few key points in this uh, fight scene because she defeats <laughs> the enemy. Um, I had a couple specific moves that I wanted her to do. So after this, this the keyframes are just getting the the important parts, the important uh, poses, and the the beats in the in the well we're going to call it a story because that's kind of what it is even little scenes with little moments that um take you take you on a whole whole little adventure even in a short little clip like this um and she <laughs> and this one is fun who doesn't want to incorporate a couple of wrestling moves into into what's usually you know, a sword fight with a tentacle. So she pins the thing to the wall, as you can see the sword's stuck in that pillar, and this part she pulls and does like a backflip power bomb to rip the tentacle across the sword um, to slice it off the rest of the... slice it off. Um, so scribbling to get the two, the two different uh, two different important poses, one at the end and one at the beginning of that 
of that flip, that dive. Um, and here's the next one, because what's better than one wrestling move in a sword fight? Well, two. So I have her like <laughs> start the cut after pinning the tentacle to the wall by pressing down on it. She goes down and then she does the power bomb pulling up. And she just does like a flying elbow <laughs> to this to this tentacle to like hammer it down against the immobile sword. Um, this is this particular sequence like I went back and forth so many different times trying to get the different poses right and keep the proportions um, the same that's why it's so so scribbly because it's just I didn't want to like draw in a ton of detail for for poses that I was that was still unsure about that I was just kind of figuring out as as kind of I went along. Sometimes I have a good idea of exactly what I want it to do and how to draw the pose right away. Other times I just, there's, I'm less confident in what I'm drawing from a certain angle. So I'll do, especially over, over a lot of weird uh, movement. And that, that happened in this one. Top down angles are, are a little more challenging than standard ones. And she's doing a lot of strange moves like this part here with her um, the parts I'm drawing in black so that they come across a little clearer is her kicking the cross guard of the hilt after it's been after the, the stab into the tentacle has been started to really just hammer it into the wall um, and you know I've said it before and I'll say it again like one of the biggest reasons that I love uh, working with, with TV paint is because the three different colors here, the, the red, blue, black, these are all being drawn on the, on the same layer. And I mean, that's not a big deal. You can always, in any other paint or animation program, you can just pick a different color and like draw it all on the same one. But if you look like that window, the little uh, tool selection bar on the top left hand side, the reason TV paint is special and makes my life so much easier is because there are erasers for each color. So I can, if I want to, I can draw all three colors or four if I use the green, which I very rarely do, but I can draw all those different colors on one layer and I can erase only one of them at a time, which means I don't have to hop back and forth between one layer. If I put her red on one layer and then the tentacle blue one on another one, which I, I'll, I, I do anyway sometimes, but to have all this stuff in one place and to be able to switch back and forth in this case between two characters and only erase parts the parts that I want instead of having to like carefully erase around certain lines so I don't erase the, what the other thing that's a feature that I absolutely love and use in TV paint constantly like it's 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 near indispensable for me. Well, not indispensable, but when I use other programs, it irritates me that they don't have it. That's just me just griping about things. Um, one of the fun parts about working with a, a, a villain is just a, a, a disembodied tentacle thing. Um, is that it's like uh, waves, um, where like a motion that starts at one end of the tentacle can flows across it to the other, and you can see that had had had. So when she hits it with the the elbow, that shock wave kind of like ripples down towards the tip of the end the end of the tentacle and that's that's kind of a fun fun part this this part is when there's a lot of jumping around because i i'm a knucklehead and forget to hit record on the screen uh let's say often is a good word for it like frequently all the goddamn time whatever um 
So there's, the, and I also jump around when I'm working on different sections. I get bored with one and then hop to the next. So if this seems a little disjointed in terms of continuity of what parts I'm working on when, uh, let me give you the, the, the breakdown so you can see different parts, the, the sequence of events in this clip. Uh, she comes flying into screen, hits the column, and is a little bit dazed and stands up. Then she gets grabbed by the tentacle that comes flying in from the left left corner of the of the stage of the frame. It swings her around a bit, and then she pushes the the the, the sword. You can see her doing it here a little bit, where she pushes with her knee against the handle of the sword to get some leverage and lever it towards into the tentacle towards the column and she uses her other leg to swing around and kick the hilt and hammer that thing into the wall and then this part here is where it, right after that happens in the it hurts the tentacle so it lets her go and she can jump free from its gnarly coils or whatever um, and right now I'm doing the, the tentacle on one one layer because I because I do work in different layers even though I can do the different colors but it's just easier to keep wacky things like this tentacle flip flopping and flailing around all by itself. Um, then she lands after pinning the thing to the wall and then jumps up, does her power bomb to push down on the tentacle against the sword. And she grabs it and brings us here to this power bomb where she grabs it and pulls it up to rip it the rest of the way off. And that's her little backflip. Yeah, tentacles. The tentacle part's kind of fun because it, it just. <laughs> I mean, it's a tentacle. You don't have to be super like detailed and like get the anatomy and proportions right because it's twisting and turning and flopping all over the place. Like, oh, her arm is longer than her arm was like half a second ago. Oh, I better change the proportions. It's a freaking tentacle. It just, it's, 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 you chill out about the proportions. Just keep the volume right and everything else will be fine. I've got that impact just flattening the tentacle out down against the floor. Um, you want to keep the volume correct so that the tentacle is taking up the same amount of space in the world. It's just squished down so it's now wider and flatter instead of a cylinder. Think like yeah, like the pancake shape. Um, and you can do that for, a, and have it really, really over exaggerated for just like one or two frames to give that sense of uh, punch. And you can barely see it when you watch it in full speed. Anyway, that brings us to here. Here is the final rough pass. Uh, there's a little bit more added to it, more volume, so you can see I've done a lot, a bit more work since I got through the stick figure stage of things. Uh, I hope you like it. Hope you found this interesting and informative in my own rambly, babbly way. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback of any kind, please leave it in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Uh, have yourselves have yourselves a lovely day. <laughs>